Hey, what's up, Speedy's Garage gang? Welcome back to the Speedy's Garage YouTube channel. I'm out on a little Sunday afternoon drive in the 170, something I really enjoy doing. You guys have heard me say before, if you've been following the channel, I love driving these cars. I don't know what it is about them. They're, they're bigger and they're comfortable. And what really cracks me up about the 170 is you're getting, you know, 1,025 horsepower, 900 and something foot pounds of torque. got comfortable AC cooled seats I mean great stereo it, it's crazy to me and what these things run at the track I mean a few years ago a nine second Challenger would have been a crazy build uh, 890 Challenger you know would have been unheard of or was unheard of to be quite honest and uh, now you can you know practically go buy it off the showroom floor you don't have to do a lot of building and maintaining and all of that type of thing and I know people treat these cars like collector's items, or some people do, and they just bubble wrapped them and stuck them away. And it's a real shame because they drive amazing. I think I've said before, I was a little worried about how the ride would be and would it be squishy or wallowy. It drives as good or better than my Hellcat did. I think street mode, which is what I'm in now, is a lot like sport was in the Hellcat. And it's like they turn the engineers loose and are like, hey, this is the last one. Go do whatever you want to do. Here's these very wide guardrails you know that you got to kind of stay between from emissions and safety but other than that go crazy and that's exactly what they did it's an amazing vehicle to drive and i'm loving it and i know a lot of you guys are thinking like well speedy when are you going to take that car to the track well maybe i already have and maybe it exceeded my expectations but that's a story for another day i wanted to talk today and it's a good time to do it about how i actually ended up with this particular 170 <clears throat> and it's related to the announcements this week that Tim Kaniscus is retiring from Stellantis. You know, there's been some weird things going on since Stellantis took over the Dodge brand, SRT, whatever you want to, however you want to lump those together um, from FCA. And a lot of us are raising our eyebrows, and I don't think many people um, understand the vision of Stellantis and this particular brand. Dodge is sort of been the the bad boy muscle car high horsepower drag race put a massive powerfully engine in everything from an suv to a pickup truck to challengers and chargers and now you've got a european company who's really focused on i would say smaller vehicles like you would expect to find in europe fuel efficiency electrification i mean they're still i think the only one of the big three and i'm not even sure i'm going to call them big three anymore because they're not really an american company but the one that are still pushing full steam ahead into electrification i believe ford and chevy have sort of started to see the writing on the wall that the people i think most people at least under the current technologies that want an electric car have probably bought one and i don't know what the market's going to look like for that long term all that aside now we're hearing, or we heard on Friday, that Tim Kaniscus has, has retired from Dodge. Without Tim, I would have never gotten this 170. Uh, one of the friends of mine, or an acquaintance, I'll say, on one of the Hellcat forums, back when my Hellcat got stolen, if you've been watching the channel, you saw that. It was basically found a couple of days later, just chopped into pieces nothing left and I was in a pretty bad place I was depressed I get attached to my vehicles and I honestly wish I did it um, it'd make things a lot easier but I get attached to them especially when I feel like I've gone to battle in them and we've raced and won races and lost races and been in the trenches together so I start to build a relationship with the car which is odd to a lot of people and speaking of my stolen Hellcat <clears throat> and I can't go into a bunch of detail or I don't I don't really want to because it ended up being a much bigger um, outfit than just some local folks and all that's being looked into but Short story is several people have been arrested and are in jail. And uh, I was contacted and asked uh, what the difference in price that I got from the insurance company versus what I had in the car. Um, if I could come up with a number and some receipts, which I provided, and they're, they're adding that to the case as restitution, which technically means I will get paid back should um, those folks ever have legitimate jobs or whatever, which I doubt I'll ever see. But having said that, I was talking about my car being stolen on one of the forums and the guy sent me a private message and he said, man, I, I know Tim and um, I can ping him and see if, if there's anything he can do for you. And I kind of made a joke and said, yeah, he's, he's probably gonna say, go check out the horsepower locator and 
see if you can find something at a dealer. But the prices were going crazy and, and it was you know jailbreak, last call and all this stuff. So I honestly didn't think I was gonna end up with another one of these, at least not anytime soon. I mean, a, a regular red eye was going for over $100,000. And if I was going to have a starting point um, to get back close to where I was with Go Man Go, it would have to have started as a red eye. So anyway, I, I tell him, yeah, you know, you can give Tim my information or however we want to try to do that. A little while later, I get a message back and he says, Tim says to email him. I had his email address. And I'm thinking, is this even for real? So I shoot an email. He's a CEO. I work with CEOs in my day job. So I kept it short and sweet. Just said, hey. Um, Jim said to reach out to you. My Hellcat was stolen. Um, hope you're doing fine. Five minutes, get an email right back. What's your phone number? And I'm thinking, okay, maybe a salesperson is going to call me or something. So I, all I did was email back my phone number and that's it. Phone rings 10 minutes after that. The caller ID said FCA on it, which kind of threw me off because it's Stellantis now, but I guess his phone hadn't been changed over. And I answered and he says, uh, hey, this is Tim Kaniskas with uh, Stellantis. How are you doing? And I froze up. I was like, holy cow, this, the CEO actually called me. And I said, well, well, Tim, I'm doing pretty good. And he goes, well, he goes, I probably shouldn't even ask you that because I imagine you're doing pretty bad with everything that's going on. And he said, shoot me some pictures of your car, you know, how you found it. So I sent him one of it like it should have been. And then one how I found it and we're talking. He was like, oh my gosh. He goes, man, these people, they, they take these cars. He said, we've been battling this and trying to come up with solutions. And then they find a technology way around it. And he shared a couple things with me that they were looking at doing. I'm not going to repeat them because I don't know if I'm supposed to. But they are still looking into ways to make them harder and harder to steal. Well, having said all that, you know, we talked for, I bet you, 15 or 20 minutes. And he is a legit car guy. He was very interested in, you know, some of the things I had done to the, um, to the Hellcat that I had. And he was um, saying that he actually followed my YouTube channel, which I was kind of surprised about. And he said they got a big kick, they, I don't know who they are, out of some of the stuff I was doing with the car and they enjoyed watching me work on it and then take it to the drag strip and make you know, it go faster. So after the end of the conversation, I said, you know, I really appreciate, you know, the call and the interest. I said, but unless you can bring my car back, you know, I don't really know if there's anything, you know, you can do to help me. And he said, well, I can't bring your car back, but I might be able to locate an allocation for a Demon 170 if you would like it. Huh? So, obviously, I said, well, yes, um, I need to check with my wife, Miss Speedy, and make sure everything's cool there, but I'm certainly interested. And uh, he says, well, you got my number, text me what you decide, and uh, we'll see if we can work something out, but no promises. He said, I, you know, we'll be straight up with you. So, long story short, Miss Speedy, of course, said, do something. She said, you're miserable to be around. And I let Tim know she gave me the green light. Here we are. Go Man Go Demon 170. And no, I did not pay any markup on this 170. I actually put the order in before the price change. So technically, I could say, or you could say, I got it under sticker price because the price went up like 12, 14 grand or something like that at some point. <clears throat> and my order had been put in about the middle of August, I believe it was, maybe late August. So that's when I was putting the order in. I got in kind of under the wire before that price change happened, thank goodness. And, and you know, looking back, I've been messing with these cars since 2009. That's when I picked up the uh, original Orange Crush Challenger, and it was a 2009 RT27J, which means it was a manual with leather interior and the technology package. I wanted an SRT, but they were on discount. The, the RTs were, the SRTs were not, so I got the RT pretty cheap and immediately uh, went to supercharge and built motor and all that, and I loved that car. And it's ironic how things worked out because I was actually shopping for a Gen 5 Camaro that had just come out. Those had just come out at the time and dealerships were marking them up. And I, that was a foreign concept to me. I had never, you know, even been interested in looking at a car where there was a markup and they were telling me I could get on a list and I had to put $5,000 down. And then it was another $5,000 over sticker when the car showed up. And I'm thinking, y'all have lost y'all's minds. And so I went down and, and uh, basically started looking for a Challenger. I saw pictures of them and just fell in love with it. You guys know I watched the Dukes of Hazard as a kid and it just fell right in line with that. And it had to be orange. The uh, Orange Crush was Hemi Orange. And then when Go Mango came out, I fell in love with that color too on the Hellcat and obviously 
obviously the demon. But that's kind of how that story went with the markups. So, Tim, I want to thank you if you are watching this video. Um, it's more than just a car like we talked about. And it really put me in a, I was in a bad spot and it really gave me something to look forward to. And, and it, did, it was, it did more for me than just getting me a vehicle. And I hope, I hope that's, I hope I'm communicating that effectively. Thank you. Having said all of that, I'm sad to hear that Tim is leaving Stellantis, although, Stellantis, although I am not surprised. I mean, look what all's going on. Jim Wilder already left and he was the lead engineer on the Demon 170 project and was a big part of the Dodge overall performance division. Um, Stellantis disbanded, even though they said they didn't, they disbanded SRT a couple of years ago and sort of dissolved them all into new roles inside of Stellantis. So that was sort of the first clue. And now you've got uh, Jim Wilder left and that was back in January. And now Tim Kaniscus is leaving. Um, Ralph Giles is about the only one left. I mean, from one of the original, what I would consider the original, you know, performance designers. And if you go back and look, and it's easy to find at, at Ralph's um, resume and Tim's resume with with Dodge, FCA, Stellantis, however, whatever you want to call it, they started about the same time and their trajectories were very similar. Um, right around the time Ralph took over for like SRT is when we saw the Challenger come out and that was, I think, a lot of Ralph's handiwork with pen and, you know, pen and ink. And he's a designer and then when Tim took over, a lot of people called Tim the father of the Hellcat because he was CEO when it was announced. And after talking to Tim, and I'm not going to say that I know him, I've only talked to him personally just the one time, but you see him at events and you can tell like the passion that he had, especially when he announced the 2018 Demon. I remember watching that live and he was very excited. I've told a lot of people it was a big difference when he announced the new Dodge Charger SRT Banshee electric car. You could just, you could just tell a difference like he was having to do a job when he announced the electric uh, electric charger, but he was excited to do the job when he announced the Demon. So I'm not surprised that he's leaving, but other than Ralph, that's pretty much it. I mean, who's left? Um, if you know of one, let me know. A lot of us enthusiasts are very confused about the direction Stellantis is trying to take things. I'm not even sure why they would have purchased the Dodge brand they're not going to do V8s anymore, um, not even in the trucks. Now, they do have a pretty potent, or at least on paper, a pretty potent inline six twin turbo. Um, I think it's 420 horsepower, which will be a little more, I think a little more torque than the 5.7 V8. But but how hard are you going to have to spin that little, that little inline six to get power out of it? We know they can make power. Look at what the Supra, the people with the two JZs do. They'll make power, but usually when you see them making big power it's like nothing and then all of it at like 6,000 rpm so that's not really going to be good in a truck that you want to haul stuff with so that'll be kind of interesting and then the bigger thing is does Stellantis understand the American market at all from what I'm seeing it's a big no um, they've gotten rid of all the cool stuff now a lot of people say well there's EPA regulations and there's this and there's that well if they developed an electric thing or several things that would bring those cafe standards in in check and they can continue to produce cars like the Hellcat I think they waited too long to do that and that's you know Stellantis came in what three years ago uh, I feel like they could have brought a couple of things in to make that happen and what are they gonna be left with they have nothing to sell right now they've got the Hornet they've got a current TRX it's 2024 they've got the current Rams but in 2025, all the V8s go away, including the TRX. And they've got the, I believe the Hellcat Durango is around this year. And that's the last year for this. So this year, what do they have? They got a TRX, 100 grand. Got a Durango, 100 grand. And they've got a Hornet, which is about a, to get a decent one, they're like about 50 grand, which is a lot for a little CUV, a little crossover utility vehicle. Most people in that segment, I'm going to say, are probably younger people starting out, starting families. They're gonna be thinking efficiency first, gas mileage and how, how inexpensively they can obtain the vehicle. From what I've seen, the Hornet, like starting price is like $38,000.
I think they perform a little bit better. They they got a mix where you can get one that's a mix of electric and and gasoline. But I don't think people in that segment are really looking for, for, for performance, and I think it's too expensive. That's my opinion. If you know a different, leave me a comment and let me know. Or if you think different, leave me a comment and let me know, because I'm curious about what your opinions are as, as enthusiasts if you're watching this channel. And another thing that's interesting is, is Tim was just announced to be head of RAM exactly one year ago. It took, <clears throat> I believe it took effect in June of 2023, and normally, at that level those are contract based positions I expect so that's usually how it works is you sign an agreement to be in that position for a certain amount of time and there's incentives based on you meeting that timeline and you guys leave me a comment let me know what you think did Tim really retire and decide hey I'm 57 years old I've made enough money and I'm gonna go sit my ties on a yacht somewhere or do you think he was tired of arguing with Stellantis leadership about things he understood in the American car market that perhaps they did not understand and just said okay you're on your own I'm out of here and finally you know Ralph Ralph Giles he may have a little bit easier time with Stellantis's plans because he's he's mainly designing the way things look or the way things feel he's he's not really designing the performance aspects of those things so he may have a little bit easier time but how much you want to bet it won't be long before he's gone. I could be wrong about that, but it wouldn't surprise me one bit if if Ralph takes off. And you've already seen, you know, some of the other channels talk about a lot of the layoffs that have occurred with with the American side engineering teams and all that. Some some quotes I've seen are as much as 90% have been laid off and outsourced to to foreign countries. So, which you know, from Stellantis' standpoint, what do they care? They're not an American company. You know, they're, I think, French primarily. So they're not really, you know, married to America. So it's not like Dodge anymore where it was an American brand. Well, that's my thoughts on everything. Tim, I wish you the best. I do hope you pop up at a performance division at one of the other auto manufacturers. And if you do, I will be watching closely to see what you come up with. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Be sure to check us out on Instagram. It's at speedies underscore garage, as well as the website, www.speediesgarage.net. Hopefully I see you out there. I'm gonna go enjoy this drive.